so this is properties of graphs and you're going to be given graphs that don't look anything like this but this one has a lot going on so i'm going to actually add a little bit to it we're going to put a little arrow here like that that means continues on forever so our graph is going to come up here from negative infinity and it's just going to go up and then back down and then back up and then back down and then back up so if you notice as it goes through that increase decrease increase motion decrease increase it's passing through these important points here and they're going to have some sort of value on there some x and some y's and so i'm just going to make some up so this is negative five and that's ten this would then be uh, zero, zero let's do that zero and it's still above so one and then this would be we'll say five and eleven and then this would be 10 and 2. So you have an x value and a y value here as you move through these graphs. So we're going to use this. This is increasing. So our graph here is increasing here. And then it decreases from here to there. And then as you move along. So when you look at each graph, you always want to start from the left and work your way through the entire graph like that increasing and then decreasing and the reason we go from the left is that's how our numbers work our numbers start and then increase our numbers start over here as a negative infinity and then they move all along the axis till we get to infinity so we always have to start from the left and work our way to the right. So our graph increases and then decreases and then increases and then decreases and then increases. And the values themselves, the negative 5, the 0, the 5, and the 10, those are telling us when the graph will increase. So it will increase to a minimum, to a maximum here of 10, and then back down to a minimum of 1, and then up to a maximum of 11 here, and then back down to a minimum of 2, and then off to wherever it is and let's put an endpoint here and we'll close it in so then it stops here and so that endpoint becomes extremely important too so we'll call it 15 comma 11 so what we have here is that it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 5 and then our graph will decrease from our x equals negative 5 so our inputs are what causes our graph to to move and modify so it increases from negative infinity to negative 5 and then it decreases from negative 5 to 0, and then increases from 0 to 5, and then decreases from 5 to 10, and then increases from 10 to 15. So you can see this kind of situation going on with our Desmos graph. So I have my little orange dot. You follow it. The orange dot is moving up, and then it hits some maximum value. And if we click on the graph, we'll see that maximum value was 9.643. So it went up to 9.643. And then now it's going down until it hits our minimum. And then it goes up. So it went down from negative 3.215, which was a high of 9.643, down to when x is equal to 3.215 with a minimum value of negative. So our graph went from 9.643, the max here, to a min, local min, of negative 3.643 when x is negative 3.215. 3.215 so if you just follow our dot <clears throat> it went up that's increase and then decrease and then increase so you always want to think about this graph as that little orange dot how does it what is it doing is it going up or going down if it's going up it's increasing and then it stops you can see that's an open dot so it will never actually hit that point it just gets closer so we're going to have to label things we're going to have an interval of increase and we will have an interval of decrease. And the increase is our green parts. So what they want you to label is the, the x's. Let me move this over. <clears throat> the x's. So it goes from negative infinity. Our first x will increase. Our function is increasing as x goes from negative infinity to negative 5. It will also increase when x is 0 to 5, and then it will also increase from when 10 
to 15. And so we're just writing these as intervals like that. It will be decreasing from negative 5 to 0 and from 5 to 10. So we're not actually listing the y's. What we're listing here are the x values because the x values cause the y to increase or decrease. So we're going to have questions like this where you have three situations. They're going to ask you to find the intervals of increase, the intervals of decrease, and the local extrema. So I've split the graph into three situations. Now where we really should start is the local extrema because those are the points that you've seen before is where we're going from. So these are local extrema. That's a local max, local min, local max, local min. So as you go through, this is an endpoint. So that's its name. As you go through the graph, see these extrema is where it changes from increase to decrease because that is the definition of a max. It's got to increase to that point and then decrease from that point. And a min would have to have a decrease to the point and an increase from it. You can even see it's red to the point. That's a min. Green to the point. It's a max. So increasing to the point it's max all right so if we label these extrema and we're just giving rough points here this is a horrible graph but it's good enough so that's two one two three four this is one two three four five six one two three four negative Okay, so we can see that it will increase from here to here, and it will decrease from here to here and here to here. It's going to go down and down and up. Remember, you've got to have that left to right motion. So our endpoints are what we need here. And so we know this is an x of negative 2. This is an x of 2. And here, this was an x of, oh, we didn't mark that one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. And then that's a negative 5, negative 2, x is 2, and x is 6. So once you have the max and mins and the endpoints marked off, you can see when is it increasing and when is it decreasing. So we know it's increasing from negative 2 to 2. And sometimes they will write these as brackets. I don't like that, but either one is completely fine because this point right here cannot be increasing and decreasing. It's it's just the one point. All right, the next one is decreasing from negative 5 to negative 2, and it's also decreasing from 2 to 6. And a lot of times they'll put a union symbol in between there, and sometimes they'll use a comma. It depends on the, uh, the person who, who they want. Now local extrema. So these are local extrema here, this one and this one. These are called endpoints. Now, can they be considered local maxes and mins? Yes, they can. But it, it all goes into the definition and which definition the instructor wants to take. So we're going to treat them as endpoints because they have a name, and we'll call these local min and local max. So we have a local max of 2 comma 4. So what that means is x is equal to 2 and our max is 4. And we have a local min of negative 2, negative 1. So that means that x equals negative 2, we have a min of negative 1. So if you notice the y value is what we're talking about here. The y value is decreasing from here to here. It's the y value is increasing from here to here, and the y value is decreasing from here. We have the biggest y value in that area, so our local max is 4. We have the smallest y value here, so that's our local min. And we're just listing that. So the x values that cause it are these, these, and these. Let me get rid of this one because I don't want it on there. And our max is 4 when x is 2. So we're just listing the x values that cause it. All right, so let's look at these two. All right, we have two special ones here. So if you look at this one, so part A is going to be intervals of increase. Part B will be intervals of decrease. And part C will give us our local min and local max. So we're going to say, put this down a bit, increase. 
decrease. Local max. They also call this a relative. So I'm going to put the other one is relative. Min, but they mean the same thing. Local max, local min, relative max, relative min. Same exact thing. Well, the max and mins aren't, but okay. So we look at our function. We know that this right here is one of our critical points. So we need to mark it. That's at one comma, one, two, three, four, five, negative five. And we know our graph will go up from here. So that's increase. And it will go down to that point. So I'm moving down. You can see me go down this direction. So we know that it is increasing from one to infinity. So that's what happens with these arrows. When you have that arrow, that means infinity. And it's not because it's going up. It's because we're going to the right. Just like this one is negative infinity, not because we're going up, obviously, because we're going to the left. We're coming from the left, which would be negative infinity, and that one's to the right, positive infinity. So decrease, then, is from negative infinity to that one again, because that's our graph. It's either going to decrease to that point and then increase from that point, just like up here. See, all those points are listed. We have our negative 5, 0, 5, and 10 in all of them because our graph goes up to ne from negative infinity to negative five and then down from negative five to zero and so on. So those points will in be included all the way across. Now, local max, we don't have an increase, a decrease. A max means increase, decrease. That would be a max. So on this one, there's none. You can also put not applicable, one of those two. Relative min though, we do, and that is the one negative five. And so we would say X equals one and we have a min local. Let's write that again in a nice way. Uh, local min of negative 5. Now this one is actually called also an absolute min. So when it is the actual minimum value of a function or relation, <clears throat> then it's called the absolute. So this one came down and went back up forever. That's an absolute min. All right, let's look at our next one. So again, we got to put our endpoints. So on this, this would be one, two, three. And again, these are horrible graphs, but you just go with them flow. Let's put that in red so you can see it a little stronger. Negative three, negative one. And then this one is negative three, one. And remember, this point is not included on the graph. It's an open dot. Okay, so again, we want increase, decrease, local max, local min. All right, so. On our graph, we know starting from the left that it goes up to this point, and then from this point it also goes up. So the increase is from negative infinity all the way, and you would think to negative three and then it stops, but no, it's negative infinity. So let me explain why. So here's a, another graph that looks very similar. If you follow a little orange dot, it's increasing all the way, right? <clears throat> And then from negative 2, you guys notice it just jumps? Because what we're doing is from, from 2. At 2, it's 3. But if we change that to 2.0001, see, it increased. So it went from 2 to 2.01. That point still exists. It's not 2.5, but you can see from there, it's still increasing. So you've got to think of all the x values. As I plug x values in here, Every consecutive x after that will cause the function to increase. So as I plug in x values moving from left to right, my y value is increasing. Even here, it's just a massive jump. We go from, <clears throat> from 3 all the way right up to 5. So the first at 2, it's 3. And then at 2.001, It's not going to let me. At 2.02, .02, it becomes 5.06. So it's just from 2 to the next point. It's jumping past 5. It goes from 3 to past 5. There just is no y value of 4. So range-wise, we actually do have values over here that include the y values as well. But there is a gap here. So what it's saying here 
is that our function does increase from negative infinity to infinity. Now, if that had been an open dot, then yeah, there's no th negative three, and then we would split it. So if there was an open dot, then we would go from negative infinity to negative three, union negative three to infinity, but there isn't. So it goes from negative infinity to infinity, decreasing, there's none. And if there's no decrease, that means we're not gonna have any maxes or mins. So yes, that was a very long, extreme explanation video, but thank you for listening.